Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, so today we're gonna do an hour of Puzzle Rush, then I'll do an hour of some game analysis. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, Puzzle Rush and game analysis. That's the plan. So let's go ahead and kick off our tactics training for this morning. Looks like I can just win a queen here. So this one looks pretty easy. Back ring checkmates. A fork. Queen of whites, I will promote with check. see here I should be able to check take the rook and then take the knight all right and this is um survival mode so we have time here all right this check looks good This is a common tactic here. You can take here and then retake. Or if white decides to take, then we can take over here. Just do a discovered attack on the queen and attack the bishop. Take, take, here, and then checkmate. Take, take, check. And then down. Just take, take, push. If takes, we're queening. If take, take, push. They do nothing, this pawn goes, and then if take, take, we queen. Basic checkmate pattern here. Looks like that will be it. I see a way for white to stop that after we play bishop f3. Uh, and then we have bishop takes and winning the queen. If I step here, I get checkmated. <clears throat> so we don't want to do that. So you have to take, I mean, that's the only move then. And now, I still can't step here. 
because I still get checkmated. So I have to take. Queen a4 check wins the bishop. Okay. I'm going to take their rook here. Yeah, I mean, I'm just up the queen. Uh, and discovered attack on the bishop and attacking the queen all at the same time. <clears throat> all right, we're up to 18. Let's see if I can beat 37 today. I'm gonna be doing this for an hour. And then after this, we're gonna be, um, I'm actually gonna be looking at some games from, from, uh, from Stein. Definitely a chess player we don't hear a lot about, so. Let's see here, I don't see anything immediate in this position. Queen d2 check, king f1. There's just nothing there. I can take back with a pawn. There's queen, uh, queen g4 check first. All right, knight takes e5. Okay, now I'm forking these, but I also walk myself into a pin. All right, all right, so if knight takes e5. Just pawn takes and then moves here, king. I don't know, the bishop just backs up and then what? I'm not seeing the... No. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that one. We'll have to go back and check that one once this ends. Oh, this one's nice. We're going to take here. King takes, and now we can do a check and win this piece. Let's see here, white to move. So yeah, I can just win this piece, although I do have check. And then checkmate, which is better than winning the bishop. A lot better than winning the bishop, actually. Okay, we can win the pawn, and then if takes, takes. However, then black has opposition, that's a draw. So if we take, king takes, now we take here, now we're winning this king and pawn again. So that's better. Hmm. Well, 
This is interesting here. If I take with the pawn, we're losing the bishop with check. If I take with the queen, the rook can take, but I can take the queen. I like here, we gotta do um, maybe some perpetual checks. Cause we're just down too much. We're just down too much material. So just get pushing upon, I think. Perhaps. Okay. Let's check. Okay, what's happening in this position here? Okay, so not my bishop's not loose if I move the rook. So I can move the rook and take the knight. And that looks decent. I don't think I have anything else. Although after, actually now that I look at this, after this move, I can't take the knight because rook a, a8 check. And the problem is I would have to block with the queen because my rook is no longer guarding c8 square. So I'm actually not a fan of that move now. Hmm. I wanted this idea to work with rook check king here uh, and then if king takes bishop c6 but rook takes comes with check and that's one of the problems with that <clears throat> and all right so i'm starting to do this process of elimination so i if i play queen jack king up i can't take the knight because of 
checkmate. Yeah, that's the only way this works if the king goes to if the king goes to g two. But the king doesn't have to go to g two. He can go to h two. Oh, maybe that's the idea. Maybe that's the idea. Maybe just rook check, king h yeah. Alright, so we're gonna play. Play here and then play Bishop c6. And the point is Rook takes Queen check. We can take. And then the Queen we take the, the bishop, we take the Queen. Right. I can't be right. Because the queen is not pinned. We're threatening checkmate down here. All right, so rook check, king h2. If now we go bishop h6, c6, sorry. And the issue is rook takes. This is the problem because that comes with check. Am I just missing something, chat? I've got to be missing something because when this comes with check, I like the idea, but our king's going to come up and then the queen's going to come here and our king and our rook will be attacked. So it can't be, that can't be the answer. Yeah, that can't be the answer. Chat, I really don't know what I'm supposed to do in this puzzle. It's not even... It's not even rated that high. I mean, what, we're probably... What, I'm probably in like the 1500s right now? I mean, those puzzles aren't, aren't, aren't that, that high for me. But this is... No oh, chat. Jeez. What am I doing? Just queen check here. If king h2, we're checking. 
We just do the light square and then we pin the pin the queen. And if the king just goes here right away, then we have this right away. Wow. Okay, it's early. It's early, Chad. We can't be doing. Yeah, the puzzle was ready at fifteen oh three. So, okay. Well, now we know. Uh, it's early. Okay, checkmate is being threatened. So we have got to move with urgency. What happens on this move? What happens on that move indeed? Uh, we play rook check, king takes, queen takes, and we're hitting the king and the rook. And that's what happens on f4. I have to take the queen. Okay. Very key move there. Okay, what's happening in this puzzle? Hey, right, this would be nice if this wasn't here. I can't just take and go with the queen for that. So there's got to be something else going on here. The queen still guards that. Even after I move like this, uh, you know. Oh wait, hold on. 
After here, here, here. Queen backs up. Now this bishop's trapped. Because so I'll be able to play f5. Or they'll do that. Okay. Didn't expect them to give up the queen, but okay. There we go. And welcome, chat. Chestnut Bird here. We are doing uh, chess training every day, Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. Usually going to kick it off with tactics training and then uh, something else after that. Today it's going to be um, game analysis of Stein. So we got about. About 30 minutes left of uh, tactics training. And then we're going to jump into the um, uh, game analysis. If you're new to the stream, I'm Chess Nerdbird. And I've been playing tournament chess since 2011. And my first non-provisional rating, like you have to play 25 games, um, 25 rated games before you get a official rating. So my first official rating was like 1251. And I've been working on improving ever since. Um, I peaked at 1783. That's my highest rating so far. But currently I'm 1740. Um, I've beat Titled players before, both on Blitz, um, online, uh, some Blitz in person. Um, I've taken down a couple expert players over the board in tournament games. So, uh, well, I'm not the not definitely not not the strongest player. I do have some some little small claims to to victory against the titled players. Um, and yeah, just been working working on improving chess. Um, October last year, I hadn't worked on on my chess at all. My ratings started to plummet online, both blitz ratings and um, I decided that was enough. And uh, <clears throat> no, I don't think that one works. But anyway, um, and so I start working on my chess every day. Because before I would sign up for chess tournaments in person over the board tournaments, and that would kind of be like a, uh, a way to force me to train and work on my chess a couple months out from that tournament. But and that method worked, but it wasn't wasn't ideal. I constantly felt like I was I was uh, slipping, and then like I, I felt like I was taking five steps back just to take two steps forward um, when I was doing that. And so, yeah, in November I decided, okay, we're gonna do training every day. And so I started waking up early, about four a.m. And uh, yeah, doing doing chest chest training. And I had streamed before in the past, and decided, you know what, it's time to get back to doing that. And so now we're streaming the training. Yeah, I feel like night. Knight d5 in this position is good. Um, yeah, because if, if king e4, then we've got rook e3. And that's going to pick up this rook down here. Mm 
Okay, so that's fine. So the only other move for the king, well, I guess the king has two moves, right? Um, to this file. But the move I was worried about is this move. What am I doing then? I thought maybe rook f3. But then I saw... Um, yeah, then I saw king here. And that attacks the rook and the knight. But I guess I just come back to e3. You take the knight and I'll take the rook. Okay. All right, so we're at 32 puzzles. I think 37 is my highest in the survival, in the survival mode. We're already down two strikes, so. How's everyone doing out in the chat? Out in the chat land, if you're watching. And you're out there, don't be shy. Feel free to say hi. Don't be shy. Feel free to say hi. Hmm. All right. I can rhyme. Even at this early time. Okay, I'm gonna stop. That's enough of that before I get too into into a a dad mode of um the rhyming. Alright, I wanted this move to work and then takes and then push the pawn, but that direct comes back. I don't really have anything. Oh, but I do have this fork. And that's nice. Okay. That puzzle was rated 1890. The simple fork with the queen. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's rated that high because, yeah, I'm sure people don't um, try to do too much. Not, not just taking, not taking the time to think in those in those positions. I'm sure. All right, my knight is pinned to my queen. All right, what's, what's going on here? Okay. 
Okay, I could I could win that A pawn. I feel like there's more though. There's more in this position. There's gotta be more in this position. Oh, there is more in this position. This knight is a little awkward here. After takes, takes, takes. The queen's trying to do two things. Guard the bishop and guard the knight, and it can't do both. Okay. 34. Trying to beat 37. That's only with no more strikes allowed. Next strike, we, we're done. Next strike and we are done. First move I'm looking at here is knight d5. Um, I'm thinking either knight will work, but mainly looking at knight e5, knight e to d5. Simply because it opens up the rook onto the king. If bishop takes, I was looking at knight takes. And then we'll take here. And we'll win a piece. Of course, black's not forced to capture. And in fact, black could capture this way. And then play this move like bishop uh, bishop d6. And that probably holds just fine. So the other move I'm looking at is knight b5. Just coming after this pawn. I feel like that's too slow though. Then I'm thinking about this idea. Bishop takes c7. And if rook takes, we're going to attack the rook. And if the rook moves away, then we're dropping into here. And then moving here with check and winning this rook. So that's an idea that I'm looking at. So knight b5, no, bishop takes c7, rook takes c7, knight b5.
I'm just gonna rook c6, knight c6, king to the d file. Knight takes f7. Well, I guess if the king, yeah, knight takes f7 is with check, discovered check. You can't put the rook on d6 because the knight controls d6. So the king moves, no knight takes h8. I've got two pawns, a rook for my bishop. And so even though my knight will be trapped back here. I would have given up two pieces for a rook and two pawns. Is that worth it though? Is that worth it? The other thought is bishop takes c7, rook takes c7, rook e to d1. Just simply threatening to double, but then knight c6. Yeah, knight c6. Then that guards the, the d8 square. So that's not going to work. And the other thing about knight b5 first. Is I'm threatening to take on c7 with knight, with the knight, which would be checkmate except for rook takes and then bishop can take. And I'm still threatening checkmate with rook d8. But then I've only given up a piece for a rook and a pawn. And that seems better than my convoluted other idea. So yeah, so I think... Uh, Yeah, I'm thinking knight b5 is the move in this position. Knight b5, targeting this. The knight can't move here because we just take and this is pinned. So knight b5. I'm pretty sure knight b5 is our, is our answer here. Perfect. All right, 35. Knight and a rook versus a queen. <clears throat> With queen h5, or a5 being a threat. Queen a5, king b1, queen a2, check mate. I mean, there's only two moves that are popping out to me right here. And that's either rook c3 check or rook yeah, rook b1. So those are the only two moves that are coming to my mind.
Rook c3 is definitely more forcing. His only move for black's king is to go here. This square, this square, this square. All these squares would be controlled. So let's look at that. Rook, Rook c3, king a4. Okay, and then I could play rook c8. Rook c8. And the queen can't take the rook because of knight b6. But is there some other move? Yeah, the queen can't even go to queen a5. Because of rook a8. Queen takes a8, knight b6. So what else do we have? Ah, oh, rook c8 is very nice. It's very nice, because the queen, yeah, this is gonna be it. King here, rook to c8. Okay, so then the queen can't go here, the queen can't go here, the queen or here. We'll mark all these red. So the queen can't go to this square, this square, this square, this square. The queen can't go to any of these squares. And if the queen takes, then we simply play the rook back with check. And when the queen takes, then we still have our knight b6, forking the king and the queen. All right, that one. That one was nice. I like that one. A knight and a rook beating a queen. Liked that one. Yeah, it looks like I can just win this knight. I'm up a whole piece. Bishop takes queen here, check. All right, we're at 37. <laughs> My record is 37. So if we get this one right, we get a new high record. Yeah, and I think I see it here. This one just looks pretty simple. Just knight d3, cutting off the defense of this pawn. That was too simple, right? All we're doing is trading trading pieces and I went upon. Hmm. 
No, and that can't be it anyway. Because after knight, bishop takes, queen takes, the king moves. Wait a minute. If I take, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Okay, what about knight d3? Bishop takes d3. Queen takes e3, check. King. I guess the king could also come out to, um, to f1. Except king f1, I could just take here, but then rook takes. Or I can't do that, I just take the queen. Okay, so knight d3, bishop takes, queen check, king f1. And then I take the knight. And you can't move the rook. Hey, check. Hey, you're welcome. Absolutely. All right, we just got a new high record here. <clears throat> hey, Chuck, thanks so much for the for the sub. And welcome to the nerd bird flock. Welcome. How are you, how are you doing today, Chuck? This one looks straightforward, right? And just take pawn takes. Queen takes king f1, or yeah, king f1. What? He's got a twist partner? Dude, that's awesome, Chuck. That's super awesome. Good job. Yeah, you should be happy about that. That's awesome. Um, hmm. If I check here, I'm guarding this square, but I'm not guarding this. Hmm. Maybe it's not so straightforward. All right, if I check here, and king h1, well then that, that's straightforward. Okay, so we can't go king h1 if I check. So king f1 is the only move. You go rook f1. That's rook f1. Knight. Yeah, I can check. He comes here. And I pick up the I get the piece back, but that doesn't seem right either. Yeah, that just doesn't seem right. I feel like there's there's a perpetual check here, I feel like. 
like queen e3, king f1, queen f3, king e1. Okay, then I have queen h1 check. Maybe that's it. Queen e3, king f1, queen f3, king e1. Yeah, right, queen h1 check. King steps up. Queen takes h2 check. If the king goes to the third file, we have rook takes. Goodness, all right, here, 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 here. Check. Now we'll just say the king comes here, queen takes. The king just goes back. Check, king comes up. What's up, Oliver Twisty? How are you? Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> All right, so we had our new we had a new record here on Puzzle Rush Survivor with twenty survival mode with thirty eight. All right, but this one's. Oh, this one's tricky. Our last puzzle was like 20, rated 21, 25. So this one's probably 22, if I had to guess. I wanted to sack on, on G3. But after King F1, And queen f3, king e1. Uh, then I could go queen h1, but I don't. Okay, I win the rook, but I'm still down a piece. And my king's in trouble. My king's in trouble because of queen c4. There's going to be checkmate. So I can't allow queen c4 because I get checkmated. Because queen c4, just for those that need to see it, queen c4, king a5, queen a4 is checkmate. Or queen a4, queen c4, b5, queen takes b5. This is assuming the queen's not, not there, okay. I know the queen's here right now. All right, um, so queen e3, this is the line I'm looking at. Queen e3, king f1, queen f3, king e1, because otherwise white's getting checkmated. I'm thinking I can't go rook e1. Or e8 because of knight takes. I'm pretty sure that's that's accurate. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I can't allow that. Okay. So king e is on e1, queen is on f3. All right, so the other move I was considering is queen h1. Oh, actually, why don't I play... Oh, wait, I can't play queen c3 to check because just queen takes. Right? I can't do that. Queen f3, king e1, queen h1, check. The king steps up to any of the squares on the second rank. Then we're taking the pawn on h2. Okay, if the king goes back to e1, then we're taking on g3 with check. So the king would not go there. If the king steps up to third rank, we take on g3 with the rook. The king can't survive that. All right. I feel like I feel like this is right. I feel like this idea forcing the king up, taking here with check, forcing the king back is right. Okay, so so I'm gonna go for that. Not right. Not right. What did I miss? I missed something. Is it rook f1 here? Oh wow, yeah, I had looked at this, but I thought, hmm. Oh, I miss I misjudged this position. It's completely missed. Yeah, I guess I missed this these threats that black has with like queen a a one h one here. Okay. All right. Well, I screwed that up. So. All right, but 38, that's a new high. So we can be, we can be happy with that. I mean, it's only one more than what we had, but. You know, that's still good. That's still good. Top score 38. All right, best of day, 38. All right, so now we're done with our tactics training. Now what we're gonna do is jump over into, um, into game analysis mode here.
All right, and we're going to analyze at least one game of Stein for an hour. So, um, so yeah, just give me a second here to get everything set up on this analysis board. All right, so who was White? White was, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this name. And then Stein had the black pieces. All right, so we're going to turn that off. And then we're going to flip the board. So we're looking at the game from Stein's perspective. All right, so Stein, not a lot of people know Stein. Stein was actually a very, very strong player. Um, but um, he died at 38 years old. So not a lot of people know about as much about him as other players. Um, and so what we're going to look at is one game from actually his junior years. Uh, and this was played in 1951 for the Ukrainian Junior Championship. And so it opened up with the French defense. So E4, E6. So here's a question for the chat. So does anyone know why the opening was named the French defense? Why is this called the French defense? Does anyone know in chat? All right, might still be a little too early for chat, so either that or I'm really delayed, but either way, the answer to why this is called the French defense is because it was, um, it was played in a correspondence game between players in London and Paris in 1834, and the Paris team won the game after starting with this move. And actually, this opening is not really Stein's Stein's type of opening. Um, later on, as Stein started to play, he much preferred the uh, Sicilian defense, which was obviously much more suited for his uh, natural tactical abilities and fighting fighting for the initiative. Okay, so. Standard French moves here. And now white plays this knight d2. And so one of the things when you're learning an opening is you should kind of understand why you're playing an opening. Of course, you could just memorize knight d2 if you want to play this variation of the French defense for white. But what are some of the pros and cons of this awkward looking move? Well, knight d2 was actually, um, I don't know, I hate saying the word invented for chess moves, but okay. Um, Tarash um, came up with this idea and it avoids the pin on the knight. So if instead white played, if instead white played knight c3, then black gets to pin the knight. So what this does is if black wants to go for the pin, white can kick it with c3. All right, so that's a, that's a pro. Okay, now the drawback, of course, is that this bishop gets shut in behind that behind this knight. So there's some pros and cons to that move. All right, knight f6, simply developing and getting a piece um, developed. However, black could also play this c5 and then after takes takes um and this was the way the Trojan liked to play um because he felt much more home with the isolated queen's pawn uh, but okay no, no, bishop 
Yeah, knight of six. Okay, e5. Okay, it releases that pressure on the e4 pawn and it increases white space advantage. Okay, so knight d7 and now bishop d3. C5, starting to attack the d4 pawn in the center. C3, the benefit of playing knight d2 is that white can defend the center with the c3 move. Knight c6, standard um, things in the French defense. I actually used to play the French defense uh, when I was like 1200 to 1400 rated. I would play this. It was actually the first opening that I had really learned. Um, when I started playing chess, it was in middle school. And I didn't really have any books on chess. Um, yeah, like my dad taught me how to play. He had a couple of like chess computers. I believe there was one that was kind of like endorsed by Gary uh, Kasparov, and, and and that was that was fun. I couldn't beat it on the hardest level. I could barely beat it on a hard level and um but anyway in the instruction manual at the very end of it was like all these openings and stuff right and i was looking through the openings and i was like but what what if my opponent doesn't play that move like i think it was like the four knights variation or something like e4 e5 knight f3 knight knight c6 knight c3 knight f6 and i was like but what if what if black doesn't play all the knights out what if they play a different move um so so that was like my first introduction to openings, and I was just like, ah, openings are, openings are dumb. I'm not gonna learn openings. So, anyway, so the reason I picked up the French defense is I had a copy of the MCO Modern Chess Openings, the the fifteenth. I think that was like the last the last edition, and I was like, what's an opening that I can play as black? That is like, okay, we're playing this opening, and um. And so yeah, so that's how I came across the French defense. Uh, the chapters weren't as long as like the Sicilian or 1e5. And so I was like, okay, I could play that. Um, but I've switched from the French defense uh, just because it didn't really suit. Yeah, it doesn't really suit me. I don't like playing behind these closed structures. I much prefer white's position. So, um, so I stopped. playing the French defense. All right, so 92, adding more support to this D4 square. And now black decides to take, or no, I'm sorry, yeah. All right, so we have a trade in the center. All right, so how might black proceed from here? If you're in the chat and you wanna answer, Feel free to chime in. Even if you're new to chess, even if you're not, you don't feel like you're that good. Feel free to chime in. There's no one. No one's going to make fun of you. No one's going to think any less of you. Feel free to suggest a move. Suggest ideas. The Stein did not play the main line. I can tell you that much in this position. Oh, hold on, I'm going to say good morning to my kid. All right. So the main line here is to play F6. But Stein played knight b6, which is a, it's more of a passive variation, although it is it is playable. So the main line is f6, pawn takes, knight takes, now knight f3, 
bishop d6 because you want to stop the bishop from coming to f4. Otherwise, you end up in a, a very, um, well, it's not about stopping the bishop, but you do get into a very passive position as, as black castles. Uh, bishop f4. Actually, I think you could even play um, queen c7 here if you really wanted to stop bishop f4. But okay, castles, bishop f4. Knight e4. And the point is if now they go knight e2, you have this exchange sacrifice. Rook takes, pawn takes, knight g5. But these, these, this line, all this wasn't really discovered in 1951. So, let's try and continue with knight b6. White castled. F4. Very thematic here. Um, just adding more support to, to E5. Also, when you have a pawn chain that's advanced like this, you usually want to advance the pawn next to your most advanced pawn. So F5 is always going to be an idea, just a thematic idea in this pawn structure. So Stein plays G6, just over securing F5 here. Knight F3. Now queen c7. Okay, a3. All right, so here, let's think about a possible continuation for black. And typically in these structures with black, if let's say it was like a Sicilian dragon or something, and, or even the knight or and you were playing like the English attack is white and Newcastle queenside. Typically, you play this idea of like king king b one um, on the queen side, or even king h one right here, just to get your king safe in these in these structures before you start any tactical operation. When playing against the uh, Sicilian, um, and so because White has this open C file, this is a, this is a good good idea for Black, just to play this King B8 move to get off of this uh, file. Okay, and of course, some people might say, "Well, what about Knight C4?" Well, after the captures here, rook c1, 97, g5, bishop e8, and b3, well, black's running into some problems on c4 here, and with their king and queen on the same, on the same file here. So that's why you just play this this calm move, King B8, avoiding the issues there. All right, now White plays B4. Okay, probably Rook C1 first, followed by B4 is the right way to continue here. Usually, you want to develop develop your pieces and get them onto the onto good squares before. Before playing B4. Okay. So now, anytime your opponent makes these type of moves, and you see a square that's protected by one of your pawns and cannot be protected. Here, let's change this to green. Okay. 
Okay. So when you see these seven moves, this right here, that blue square, C4, is considered an outpost for black. And what that means is simply that there's no pawns that can push a piece away. So you can plant a piece on C4, and white can't make it move with a pawn. So we could say that C4, we could say E4 is also an outpost. And you'll notice that white has an outpost here on, on F6. But there's not really a way for white to come and access that square. As you'll see, this pawn controls the pawns are controlling really all the squares that could that could that white could use to get there. That's up for G4, but but okay, how's the knight gonna get to G4 without wasting a whole bunch of time? So black can make immediate use of this of this outpost and does so. So immediately white just takes, which is probably a strategic error. All right, so it's better to trade this bad bishop for this knight. By trading the light squared bishop, you leave pawns that are on the same color as your remaining bishop. So that's why you can consider bishop takes c4 as a little strategic error. So maybe what white should have done is play to move like queen b3, and after knight e7, rook f to c1, knight takes d2, knight takes knight f3. Then white's probably doing white's probably doing okay here. So always be mindful if you're about to give up a bishop that you're giving up the right bishop. Because again, you don't want to leave yourself with a bishop that's on the same colors, the same color as the pawns that are on in the center. Because then your bishop just really has nowhere to go. So okay. So Stein's opponent took. And now queen c2 and knight e7. All right, so black can be happy having secured the bishop pair, as well as so we've got the bishop pair, and we have these two beautiful squares here, f5 and, and d5, that our opponent really can't touch us on, especially, especially d5. And if you want to get technical, then yes, this is an outpost for black as well, but there's really not a way to use that. This knight's going to come out to either one of these squares and just be an awesome, an awesome piece for black. All right, so white tries knight g5, threatening the tactic here of forking the two rooks. So black defends that with bishop e8. And now going for 94, I guess trying to say that they have an outpost and they want to use it. But probably just advancing on the queen side would probably, would probably be better for, for white here. So how does black gain the initiative here? And we've already talked about the squares that black should use here. And so in this position, black goes for knight f5, going after this pawn, stopping f5 for sure. And white doesn't have time to play g4 to kick the knight just because of we're going to win this pawn. So. Now white played knight c5. And 
Okay, so should black take on d4? Or is there something better? <laughs> I'm sure Yasser Sarawan would just take the pawn. And this is exactly what Stein did. He did take the pawn. However, there's some other moves to consider here um, because um, the reason being simply that black plays on the dark squares instead of the light squares where white truly has weaknesses, right? So there's some alternatives here. There's bishop c6 activating the bishop. And some lines given here are queen takes c4 Bishop takes c5. Pawn takes c5. Queen d7. And now we're going to take on. Now we'll take on um, d4. Our bishop's better placed here. Attacking along here. We've gotten rid of white's active knight on c5. So that's a, that's a little bit better. Um, the other move to consider is queen c6. Plan to go queen d5 and bishop c6. Hey, what's up, Jiminy? Oh, thanks, yeah. Yeah, it's doing pretty good here. Um, just analyzing a game played between Stein when he was a, a junior. Okay, and then the other move to consider would be bishop takes c5. It removes the defender of some light squares immediately. And then after uh, b takes c5, queen c6. And black lands place the bishop behind the queen with pressure on the long light diagonal. Hey, the stream's been going pretty good. Thanks, thanks, Jimmy. Glad you're here. Okay. So after after knight c5, we had we had some better ideas than just taking the pawn. Basically, you can play bishop c6, queen c6, or just taking the knight right away. Um, instead, Stein took on d5 or d4. And then after trades, it should be three. Now we go for this. Bishop takes c5, getting two pieces for the rook. If they take how close? Um, well, that's a good question. Without any, uh, without any over the board tournaments, it's hard to say. Um, how close I'll be. But hopefully close <laughs> hopefully um, all right so in this position let's think about it from white's perspective and what is white's best continuation Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think we're all closer to being uh, millionaires than than Jeff Be Bezos too. So, <laughs> so I'll take that. But uh, but yeah, you 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 get there. It's just you know, it just it just takes time. It takes time. It takes perseverance. You know, it takes dedication to 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 get better at it. Um. Like my first rating was 1251 over the board, but I had played a little bit um, several years before that, almost a decade before that. I had learned some stuff, but never played in a tournament or anything. All right, Jimmy. Yeah, absolutely. 
lurk all you want and uh, thanks for hanging out all right so here why don't you just take the pawn All right, so why should just take this pawn? If uh, if rook takes, then king f2 is just going to trap the rook. The rook has nowhere to go. Um, okay, so white shouldn't have been scared of, of that. And after this move, well, then you can say, what about bishop b5? Well, that's fine. We'll go here and then, um, oh, I'm sorry. Takes, takes, king f2, right. Now bishop b5, queen takes. Now rook e4, g3, rook d4, rook a to d1. And after all these trades, Black has good dark square control. Black's got good light square control. It's all. It's all fine there. But I guess the point is that black could also just play Queen d8 here. And then after rook fd1, bishop c6. <clears throat> and this is also probably pretty good for black here. They've got good control of the light squares. And um, and yeah, it's hard for white just because, again, these pawns they're on the dark squares and really cutting off this bishop's power. I mean, just imagine if this if this pawn wasn't here, this this, this could be a better position for for white. Um, if these pawns were back on the light squares, it would definitely be a lot better position for 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 white. Um, but again, these pawns are just blunting this bishop. Thanks so much for the follow. And welcome. If you're new, we are doing uh, game analysis right now. Every morning, we jump on at 5 a.m. Eastern time. We do some tactics training uh, for an hour, and then we do then we do something else after tactics training. Um, today, it's it's game analysis. Usually, it's going to be a game analysis, but sometimes we'll do some in-game work. Um, yeah, it just kind of depends on on the mood, but definitely you can always expect tactics training for an hour um, and, and going from there. Okay, Mr. 65, Rook D3. Okay, yep. So white should have played Queen to 64. Instead, white got worried about their, their bishop and played queen f2. And this loses a pawn, the position, and the game, all in one move. You want to make multi-purpose moves, but you don't want your move to be that multi-purpose, not that type of multi-purpose. All right, so after bishop c6, rook f to c1. All right, so black just doubles. East three just creating a little, a little escape square for the king. And that's why you can't play here because this just loses immediately for for white. Because after takes, takes queen. Well, white is just down. I got a rook for the queen. All right, so after bishop c6, rook fc1, rook hd8, h3. 
Now black plays c3, protecting their pawn. Queen e5, and rook c2. All right, so white's still trying to hold on here. But here, black can force the matter, so. What is the best move for black in this position? <clears throat> and again, this goes back to the concept of, of the wheat squares that we talked about. When pawns can't control a square. So if we're looking at this position, all the squares for black in here. Hey, thanks for the follow. All these squares are, are weak. In, in white's camp. Because they can't be controlled by, by pawns. All of those squares are weak, are weakened, and so we can use use that to our advantage in, in these in these positions, especially when you see pieces lined up like this. So the best move for black in this position would be Bishop E4, and this wins material by force. So if Rook B4, yeah, Rook D1 check. King h2, and bishop takes. Now, if you go here, then rook d2. Bishop takes, pawn takes, rook d1, and now bishop takes b1. And you're up a pawn. A very dangerous pawn. All right, instead, Stein played Queen A four, which is not not a bad move. I think it's like the next best move. Uh, rook b to c1 and here black just takes the plan is just to win with this passed pawn all right so now king h2 is played queen b4 rook e1 And now here's Black's plan in action. Just push the pawn. Queen f1. A4. All right, h5. Now these are always the moves that really get me. Because it goes, okay, I'm just not in a hurry. So I'm going to gain space um, on the king side and just prevent any type of counterplay from white. Okay, rook b1, and then queen c4. Yeah, sorry, queen c4. Queen c1, but this is, you know, you might as well resign. And now rook, rook d1, and white did resign here in this position. All right, because white's going to lose a rook lose a queen for a rook or a rook for nothing all right and this game actually ended within half an hour so these players were playing super fast and stein stein would usually always play his games very fast stein would, would play these games super super fast um i mean usually 15, 20 minutes 
for a game and play just in such a, a brilliant way. So, thank you everyone for hanging out. We're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave it there for now. Again, for those new to the stream or that have been watching, this is Chess Nerd Bird. I stream every weekday, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Make sure you click the follow button though, if you're on Twitch or wherever you are. Make sure you come over and click on the follow button so you get alerted when I do go live, but 5 a.m. Eastern time. Oh my, my tech, tech, yeah. Yeah, I, I used to do chess or, or music as well, but um, but yeah, I, I found that just, you know, just having it up. But but yeah, every every morning, 5 a.m. Usually I go a little bit longer, but this morning I've got I gotta get some stuff done before work. Uh, but usually I go up up until like seven for another hour. Um so usually usually um we'll, we'll go a little bit longer. Um but yeah, this morning I gotta get some stuff done. But um but yeah, make sure you click the follow button. Um if you want to subscribe, obviously feel free to subscribe. Obviously feel free not to subscribe if you if if you don't have it or or rather use that money for someone else or your stuff. That's perfectly fine. Um but yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning, five AM. And we also stream Saturdays at ten AM. Um again every morning. It's the same thing. We're gonna start out with tactics training, doing some some uh, puzzle rush survival mode. That way, some of the beginners can see the easier puzzles, but as we start to progress, some of the stronger players can get, get some of the challenge with the stronger puzzles. Um, plus, it helps helps me too with that. And then going over game analysis or in games or, or doing something else. Um, so, hope you all enjoyed the stream. And we will see you next time to see if there's anyone out there in chess land that we want to raid while we're here. Let's see here. Let's raid. Let's raid this person here. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day. No, that's not what I wanted. What just happened? Boy, I tell you, we'll get we'll get better at the rating, rating here soon. So, all right, guys, thanks so much. Make sure you give some love to who we're going to go see, and we'll see you next time.